Meanwhile, in Panmunjom, North Korean ambulances hurry United Nations sick and wounded prisoners of war towards no man's land, where 600 of them will be exchanged for nearly 10 times as many reds. The ambulances turn into the compound and eagerly the prisoners clamber out. Once more, they are with their own people and they are free. Among the prisoners are four Turks and the first to arrive receives a warm welcome from a Turkish officer. A solitary Greek with a magnificent beard grown during captivity is another to arrive in the first batch. Now come the stretcher cases, the men who have given much in the struggle for peace. Many are still seriously ill and their wounds have yet to heal. Helicopters stand by to fly them to hospitals further south to receive immediate attention. For the rest, the road over Freedom Gate Bridge leads them towards Munsan. American ambulances bring them to Freedom Village, a new town specially built to receive them. In the convoy are 12 British soldiers, some of whom were captured in the battle that won for the Gloucestershire Regiment the proud title, the Glorious Gloucesters. General Mark Clark, the United Nations commander, adds his own personal welcome. All the released men are dressed in dark blue Chinese-style uniforms and Russian-type caps, part of the communists' last-minute goodwill efforts. Although it is believed that conditions, particularly to begin with, were bad, a few of the released men are willing to make much comment, probably to protect their friends still in communist hands, and so as not to cause any ill feeling during the forthcoming peace negotiations. Arthur Hunt on the left and trooper Edward O'Donnell are among the first Britishers released. O'Donnell's home is in St. Helens, Lancashire. Western Supermare is Hunt's hometown. A Lance Corporal in the Gloucesters, he was captured during the Imjin battle. Soon he will be back in Britain. But now in Panmunjom, talks begin to bring peace to Korea, which would bring them all home again. <laughs>